The first steps to establish communication with the serial port and you're going to need some terminal software to create the connection. Here we have some hyper terminal software so let's configure it. I'm using COM1 through RS232 to talk to the host so we'll have to configure COM1. You're going to see 115,200 as the bits per second. 8 data bits. Parity none. Stop bits one. And flow control none. Click OK, then we'll enter the dialog window to log in. The default login is administrator, and the default password is password. Now we're in the CLI, and I'm going to type in the menu to help us enter the CLU. Now we're in the CLU. Use the arrow key to navigate down to the Network Management function. Hit Enter twice and we'll see the Management Port settings. The default DHCP setting is disabled, so we'll have to enable the DHCP in order to get an automatic IP address. Hit the spacebar, then we'll enable DHCP. Now I'm going to use the arrow key to navigate down to save these settings. Go down and hit the Yes key. So now we're back at the Network Port Summary table and we'll need to take a note of the default IP. Write it down because we're going to use it to log in to WebPAM Pro. Open a browser in your computer and type in the IP address you just wrote down. Now you can see WebPAM Pro login. This is the same process as with the CLI. Administrator is the login username and the password is password, so go ahead and hit login. Now we're in WebPAM Pro and the first thing you'll see is the array configuration. Since we haven't configured our hard drives, I'm going to guide you through the setup. The setup provides three different options. The first one is the automatic configuration. It takes all your drives and creates one array with all logical drives in that array. The second one's the express configuration. This will give you some options, but all the logical drives remain the same. Finally, we've got the advanced configuration. This gives the user a full choice to pick any of your hard drives and create from them different types of RAID level. So first, let's select the automatic configuration. Make sure it's highlighted, then go ahead and hit next. Then we'll see a summary screen. Notice that physical drives are selected. This is because the automatic setup takes one of those physical drives and uses it as a global spare. So now what we have here is a RAID 6 array with the highest capacity of drives available. The stripe size is a 64K default. The sector size is 512 bytes. The read policy is read ahead and the write policy is write back. Once we understand what we have in this setup, go ahead and hit the submit button to start building the array. Next I'm going to select the advanced configuration setup. Again, make sure it's checked and then click next. The first screen is where we create the array. An array is a group of physical drives and I'm going to create an array with three physical drives. Check each drive and hit the arrow to move them to the right hand column. I'm going to show you how to create a RAID 5 array. And please note, a different RAID level will appear for selection according to the number of drives in an array. Here I want to use the full capacity of the RAID set. The default stripe size, sector and read and write policies are good for most applications. Once you confirm the settings, hit update. You can now see that we're using all the drive contents of the logical drives since we selected full capacity earlier. If you select only half of the capacity, this bar will only show halfway. And that means you can create more than one logical drive in your array. So, if you're happy with these, go ahead and click Next. 
This is a summary screen for you to make sure that all your settings are finalized before you start to build your array. OK, the number of physical drives is 3. Check. The physical drive's ID is 4, 5 and 6. Check. We have configurable capacity and free capacity. Check. So when they're all checked and you're happy with these settings, click Submit. Now we've created the disk arrays, you'll notice that there's a logical drive residing there. Moving on with the navigation tree, let's take a look at some of the other items. Clicking on Disk Array 0 gives us a front view of the VESRAID system and some basic information on this array. If I click on UPS, it shows all the settings if I have a UPS connected. Going up to Enclosure, it gives us a transparent display and a healthy overview of the entire system status, including controller, enclosure, cooling unit and the power supply. And I can even get more detailed information if I click on advanced controller information. On top of the WebPAM Pro, there's an administration tool which provides a full list of administrative monitoring tools built into the VESRAID. Detailed subsistent information can be retrieved either through WebPAM Pro or a simple USB OPAS plugin. If you open a case with our online technical support team, this will help you get a quick subsystem reporting file required for troubleshooting. For the OPAS operation, you might want to check with Promise Tech support for details. But here, I'll go ahead and hit save to get the subsystem service report from WebPAM Pro. The VESRAID system service report is a comprehensive tech-based report that contains advanced information as well as all the NVRAM and runtime events that have occurred. The service report will be helpful for tech support to troubleshoot and diagnose any issues with the VESRAID. Now we've got the storage array ready and learned how to read the subsystem information in WebPAM Pro. We'll have to set up the iSCSI ports and link aggregation in order to use the iSCSI system properly. Clicking on the Network Management function under Administrative Tools, you'll see iSCSI ports and the link aggregation tag available. So let's continue and hit the iSCSI ports. Then you'll see a full list of iSCSI port information. DHCP is disabled by default. And I'm not going to change that because we'll need a fixed IP for all the iSCSI ports. OK, let's move on and hit Port Configuration to do the setting. Good, now we're in the summary screen of the iSCSI port. DHCP is again disabled by default. We recommend using 192.168.2.11 as the IP address, so go ahead and change that if it's not right at the beginning. The subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. There's no need for the gateway IP address setup. The jumbo frames disabled, this is all looking good. So I'm going to go and hit the submit button to save the setting. Going right to the link aggregation tag, I'm going to hit Create Link Aggregation to activate this function. Link Aggregation bonds all the physical connection ports into a logical loop. So here I'm going to combine two ports into one. So here the trunk ID is 1 and the assigned master port is port 1. The slave port is port 2. So go ahead and hit Submit to save the setting. You can also use trunk port 3 and port 4 as a different trunk ID to make a connection with a different host. Now we've configured the VES RAID, let's expand the capacity with the VES JBOD. Setting up the VES JBOD enclosure is pretty much the same as setting up the VES RAID. Install the rail kit, slide the system in the rack and then go around the back and cable it all up. So now we have the VES JBOD in the rack, we need to make the expansion cabling. Both the iSCSI and the SAS systems have a SAS expansion port on the controller. And now we have an iSCSI system on top, so we're going to make the connection with the SAS cable. 
Go ahead and plug it into the diamond expansion port in the system. Then put the other side of the cable into the circle port on the enclosure. Please note that up to four units of the VEST J-BOD can be expanded under the VEST RAID system. So what you need to do is get a new SAS cable and plug it into the diamond expansion port on the VEST J-BOD and then go down and plug it into the circle port on the next VEST J-BOD enclosure and so on and so forth. So finally, what we're going to do is connect up the power of the VEST J-BOD. Here I have a redundant power model. So I'm going to connect two power cords with the VEST J-BOD enclosure. Once ready, make sure you boot up the VEST J-BOD completely before you boot up the VEST RAID system. Now we have the VEST J-BOD expansion unit ready, let's go back to WebPAN Pro and configure the additional storage. When you get back and log in to WebPAN Pro, you can double check if your new storage has been added under the enclosure view. As you can see, enclosure number 2 has been discovered and that means your expansion setup was successful. Clicking on it, you can see more detailed information on the new added storage. To configure the additional storage, you're going to go back down to the disk array and go through the setup and the three different options. So that's it for Promise Level 1 Best Raid Subsystem Training. For more product information, please see our website for details. On behalf of Promise, thanks for joining us.